Welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about kind of different definitions and specific types of corruption. And, you know, as I mentioned in the previous, um, or the first video in this playlist, it's very hard to come up with a real exact definition of corruption. You know, even as there's kind of like a gray area between like corruption, gift giving, bribery, it's all very confusing. So we'll talk about that in this video. And, you know, I think of corruption, uh, it's one of those things that it's very hard to describe what it is, but when you've experienced it, you can definitely say, aha, that's it. So the definition of Vito Tanzi um, is that corruption is the abuse of public power for private benefit. And this is a definition that is specifically applicable to governmental or public sector corruption. You know, you could also say corruption is the abuse of private power for private benefit, and that could explain like, how a business owner um, engages in behavior that could be considered corrupt with regards to you know, a local, uh, a regular civilian person in a community. So that could be a business engaging in corrupt behavior with a person, a government, you know, um, a government official extorting a business or a local person would be the classical definition public power for private benefit, or it could also be private benefit, abuse of private benefit, private power for private benefit. So you could look at it either way. I don't, I, and as I'm sitting here thinking about it, I guess you could have a definition of corruption that would include private abuse of private power for public benefit, you know, I don't think that one would work. So I think, you know, you really want to look at the abuse of public power for private benefit. So a governmental official using their position in the government for their own well-being or the abuse of private power also for private benefit. I don't think, and if you can think of something, put it in the comments. I definitely appreciate it. But in terms of someone using, you know, a form of private power for public benefit, no, I don't... Uh, I don't see it. Um, I even wrote an article discussing corruption as the abuse of public power also for public benefit. And that would include um, intergovernmental relations where a civil servant uses his or her particular position to extort a foreign government for kind of a public benefit. Um, I know, for example, in my article I talk about the U.S. Army in Iraq where I was serving the Iraqis um, where we were working would shake down and do things that can be considered forms of corruption against the U.S. government, and then it was going and be benefiting the Iraqi people, whatever, however you want to interpret that. Um, so in that case, it was public power for public benefit also. So um, so I guess it, it's a little bit confusing because there are so many different ways that corruption um, can exist. And, of course, we also talk about private benefit you know, what does that even mean, private benefit? You know, normally you think of it as like a single person, like my benefit. But we could also look at it as benefiting, um, you know, like a political party, um, socioeconomic class. Like in Iraq, for example, kind of the tribe was important. So, you know, I think the things that um, our friends in Iraq took for themselves probably didn't go to them entirely, but maybe went to their, their tribe or their family or their friends, etc. So even this idea of private is a little bit hard um, to kind of put your finger on. And one of the most important things about corruption, is, and I mentioned this in the previous video, we don't even necessarily have to have a form of monetary exchange for there to be corruption, right? Uh, a lot of corruption involves exchanges of a non-monetary nature. Um, so for example, you could trade positions. Um, you know, okay, so I'll do this favor for you, but in exchange, you give my daughter a job. You see, that's more of a positional thing. Or, you know what? Um, if you work for me on this political campaign, I'll make sure that you're going to be an ambassador later. Or, you know, thanks for your service. Take two weeks at, at my hotel. Again, these are kind of non-financial. And by the way, the number one form of payment in, in, with regards to corruption is in the form of sexual favors, which don't exactly have a real monetary value. So it can become kind of hard to measure. So that further contributes to why corruption is, is a difficult phenomenon uh, to track.
Now we also talk about gifts versus bribes. Another very um, difficult thing to distinguish. A bribe is almost always going to imply some degree of reciprocity. In other words, I'm going to give you this and I want that in exchange. It's very much a transaction, right? So here's $1,000. I want you to look the other way. Here's $1,000 to give me that illegal privilege. You know, one of my former students, and he's about my age, so he remembers uh, what cable uh, was like before Netflix and all this kind of stuff. And he said that they would always bribe the cable man uh, to turn like the little switch in the cable box that you'd have outside. That way they could get free HBO and free Netflix and things like that. So that's an example of a bribe. Here's 20 bucks, because remember in the early 90s, $20 was a lot more than it was now. Here's 20 bucks. Just turn the switch and don't tell anybody. I want HBO. Okay? It's very, very explicit. Compare that to gifts, which, you know, they can kind of help you grow relationships, but there's not a very explicit quid pro quo. There's not a very explicit, you do this for that, but it's about building relationships. And there may be some reciprocity there, but it may be implied. In other words, you know, I'm going to keep giving gifts to this government official. You know, I want to get on their good side. And maybe at some point, you know, if I get pulled over by the police, they can make that ticket go away. But it's not really that explicit. Or, you know what, I'm going to give to this political campaign and hopefully if they get elected, you know, maybe I can get, you know, a position in the new government. But it's not all that explicit. So it's about building up good relationships kind of in the hopes that somewhere down the road, you know, there can be some sort of um, a return on the investment, so to speak. So that's the difference between gifts. Gifts are kind of cultivating goodwill in the hopes for a future reciprocity, but it's not all that explicit. Whereas bribes, it, it, it's quite clear. Um, so again, we don't exact, but of course, then that's when it gets into the weird uh, territory, like where, at what point does a gift become a bribe, right? Uh, I don't know, how many gifts do you make before it becomes a bribe? It's, it's a very confusing area, so. Um, and of course, corruption, there's different kinds within the government sector. You know, we can have what we call bureaucratic or petty corruption. And that's basically, you know, for example, you know, you got a low-level civil servant wandering around and you give them a bribe so that you pass your food service inspection. Um, I had a colleague at one of my previous jobs. Her nickname uh, was Crash. Uh, she's probably the worst driver uh, ever. And I forgot how many times you can take a driver's test before they say, like, you can't take it anymore. But she was one away from that. And so she went to another county and because there was evidently somebody who worked for uh, the licensing authority, our Department of Motor Vehicles, who um, would basically give you the license for a certain sum of money. So she went to this next county, and she said she got in the car with the guy, and then he just drove around the block. She handed him the cash, and then she got the license. Um, so that's an example of uh, petty corruption. Kind of as a corollary, she did have her license, but she still wasn't a very good driver. Um, the first week she had her license, uh, she drove on the sidewalk. Um, later that week, I think she ran over a parking meter, and then she finally totaled her car running into a parked vehicle. So fortunately, she was taken off the road. Uh, but that's kind of your bureaucratic or petty, petty corruption. And by the way, I want you to notice that I'm giving an American example because corruption is not something restricted to developing countries. And we'll talk more about that uh, later in this video series. But it can happen anywhere, including in quote-unquote developed countries like the United States. Now, you can also have grand corruption. And that can involve things like bribing political figures and um, things of that nature as well. And again, I have heard from people who work in auditing organizations. It happens in pretty much every country in the world, including the developed countries where politicians are taking bribes in exchange for all sorts of political favors. So it does happen everywhere you go. Now it can be what we call cost reducing or benefit enhancing. Okay, So cost reducing. Let's say, and a lot of countries have this, like um, a lot of countries, if you're old and you're poor, you can get discounted utilities, and you usually have to provide some sort of a documentation proving that you're old and you don't have a lot of money, therefore you get cheaper electricity. So let's say that I go to a local utility office and I say, yeah, uh, my, you know, my grandma is really old. Um, can I get a discount on uh, my utility bill? And they look and they say, well, no, actually you can't because your grandma earns too much money or she owns her house or for whatever reason she doesn't qualify. 
And I look at the bureaucrat and I say, all right, how about I give you, you know, $200 just right here in cash on the spot, and then you pretend like you saw my grandma's financial records and determine that she was so poor that she needed the discounted utilities. So that's an example of um, cost reducing. Now, imagine that you have someone in your family who died and you bribe a local official to pretend like they didn't know that that person died just so you can keep getting their pension. That's an example of benefit enhancing corruption. It can be briber initiated or bribe be initiated. So briber initiated would be, for example, I'm going to bribe a public ser a public servant. I say, you know what? Um, you know, let's say I go to the post office and I say, you know, I've got to mail some contraband. Um, and they say, no, you can't mail contraband. You can't mail drugs. You can't mail alcohol, whatever, in the post office. I say, hey, you know, here's a thousand bucks. Can you mail it for me now? Oh, okay. That's an example of briber because I'm paying a bribe and I suggested that a bribe. Uh, be paid. Then there is bribe be initiated. And this is when you come into things like extortion. So let's say I own a restaurant and uh, a local food and uh, a local health inspector comes by and they look at uh, my restaurant and they say, well, you know, this restaurant really isn't that clean. I'm going to give you a C rating. And I say, hey, <laughs> calm down. Or, and then they, but they say, let me rephrase it. They say, I'm going to give you the C rating. And they say, I say, um, they, then they turn to me and they look and they say, well, but if you were to pay me some cash under the table, I could probably give you that A. So that's me using my power as a civil servant and extorting uh, someone um, for some sort of a special privilege. And that's um, bribe initiated corruption. It can be coercive or collusive. Coercive is, again, like extortion, as I mentioned in the first video. That's the kind of thing where I say, you know what? If you don't give me money for this, I'm going to shut your business down. If you don't give me money for this, you're not going to get your permit. You're not going to be able to operate. Or it could be collusive, kind of like a mutual understanding, um, you know, that I'm going to pay you to kind of give me some sort of an enhanced benefit. So that's kind of collusive. It's not forced, but it's kind of a team effort. It can be centralized or decentralized. So there are certain countries where corruption um, is basically a part of life, and it's almost a government policy. Right. Um, decentralized would mean that more at the local level, there is a particular bureaucrat or civil servant that engages in corrupt behavior, but it's not, you know, typical of the entire civil service administration. Now, it can be predictable or arbitrary. There are countries where it is a known fact that there is corruption, and uh, some places they even have. Um, uh, like a little placard that tells you exactly how much these corruption uh, fees cost. So let's say um, you go to a country and you need some paperwork done, like for a marriage license. I won't tell you which country this is, but you need a marriage license. And there'll be two signs on there. It'll say one is the government's fee to get a marriage license, and then the price listed right next to it is the fee for the bureaucrat to do that work for you, right? Or there might be like an expedited service. So in other words, it could be, well, it costs this amount of money to get this particular government service done, but if you expedite it, in other words, I've got it posted that for another $50, I'll take care of it myself, myself as a government official, and therefore you'll get your service in a better uh, kind of a manner. And so that's the predictable kind. And then the arbitrary is more of sometimes a civil servant you know, feels like shaking down a local businessman and sometimes they don't, and how much those fees actually are can, is kind of a process of negotiation. And again, as I mentioned, it can involve cash payments or not. It can be, you know, cash for service or privilege, or it can involve like an exchange of favors. So these are the kind, this is kind of like our little broad discussion of corruption and the different types of corruption. And in our next video, we're going to talk a little bit about the factors that are known to contribute to corruption. If you like these videos, again, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below and I'll respond to them. I'm looking forward to seeing the next video.